brothers and sisters, please stand as we receive the body and begin this act of worship. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live unto the Lord. And if we die, we die unto the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Our Savior, Christ Jesus, abolished death. and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of hell. Live also, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, for the first things are passed away. Brothers and sisters, we have gathered to worship God and to celebrate the life that God gave to our dear sister, Dorothy. Let us therefore give thanks and praise to God for all that God has done during her lifetime and continues to do for us today. The hymn, How Great Thou Art, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made. Oh, 
be seated. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement, praying that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace so that even as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and loved we may not be overcome by this trial but we may hold fast trusting in your goodness and mercy assure us O lord our god that death is not the end of those who trust in you 
And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you give to your troubled children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life, lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow, and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, as we continue in this act of worship and thanksgiving for the life of our sister Dorothy, we now invite Avril Scanterbury Seely, who will share with us the eulogy after which we will sing to the glory of God the hymn, Jesus is all the world to me. First, the eulogy. I am reading this obituary, which was written by Cheryl Bell Brathwaite, Dorothy's loving grand goddaughter who lives in the USA and regrettably could not be present at this service. Dorothy Ione Miles was born on March the 23rd, 1924 in Fontabelle, St. Michael to the late Vivian Dare and the family later moved to Tudor Bridge where Dorothy established lasting relationships with many of her neighbors. Dorothy loved her family very much and was one of four siblings, all of whom predeceased her. Brothers Adolphus, Wilfred, and Jim, and a sister, Kathleen Dare. She met and married the love of her life, Harcourt Miles, in 1959 and relocated to Fairfield, St. Michael. Dorothy migrated to the, to the United States in 1970, where she lived in Brooklyn and pursued a career in the home stroke healthcare industry for over 25 years. She was awarded a special certificate of recognition on two occasions from her employer for the exemplary manner in which she took care of her patients. Dorothy loved to bake and cook and was always willing to entertain. She had a special love for Manischewitz wine with her cheese and chocolates. She was an awesome baker and could make the best cassava pone you could ever enjoy. She was a fashionista who loved to dress and loved to shop and would usually walk around all day looking for bargains and shopping until the stores closed. She was full of energy, yet very reserved, kind, and had a heart of gold. But if you did not want to know the truth, don't ask her because she told it straight from the heart. She was the type of person that if she asked you to do any shopping for her, you had to buy exactly what she wanted or you would have to take it back to the store. She never wanted you to do anything for her without her repaying you. She always loved to reminisce about old times. Her smile was infectious. Her personality, generous. She was such a caring person, a true and loyal friend. Her incredible relationship with the Bells lasted for over 70 years. 
She was always willing to help anyone in need. She was a happy person, enjoying life to its fullest. She was a joy to be around and a fitting personality in any group setting. To know her was to love her. Likewise, she was a dynamic person, people person, and loved all with whom she came into contact. Dorothy returned to Barbados in 2000 to spend her last years. She rejoined James Street Methodist Church where she had been an ardent member and served in various capacities for over 50 years. On Thursday morning, March 24, 2022, the Lord dispatched an angel from heaven to call her home to rest. While her passing has left a great void in our hearts, we know that she is in a better place. We are comforted that she can now rest in eternal peace. Dorothy's loving memories will be cherished by her two nephews, Winston and Everton Dare, nieces Judy, also known as Marcia, Carol and Ethel, great niece Natasha Benjamin, goddaughters Cheryl Bell Brathwaite and Sherilene Young, and other relatives and friends. Our sincere thanks to her support team who never wavered in their commitment to be sure that Dorothy was taken care of until the end. In particular, David Knight, Mrs. June Moore, and Mrs. Angela Grant for their love and kindness. Special thanks also to her caregivers, Simone Lane and Marcia Lane. May Dorothy rest in peace and rise in glory. As we sing the next hymn, Jesus is all the world to me, please note that the first line of the hymn is underlined as the title of the hymn. Please note that that is where the hymn begins. Jesus is all the world to me. So that's the first line.
My brothers and sisters, we are met in this solemn moment to commend Dorothy Eon Miles into the hands of the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent His Son Jesus Christ to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed, and in whose name alone we have salvation. Having heard the eulogy, a recollection of her life and witness. Let us now hear the word of God as is written for us in Holy Scripture. The responsive psalm is taken from Psalm 23 and Andrew, Adrian is going to read for us or lead us in that reflection and followed by Romans chapter 8 and St. John chapter 14 by Natasha and Winston. Adrian. Good morning, congregation. The responsive psalm, uh, when we're reading, the congregation will read for, uh, verses 2, 4, and then we'll read, all read verses 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths for his name, in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the dark of the no evil with him, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. The reading is taken from Romans 8, verses 31 to 39. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared his, not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall I lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. It is he that condemneth. It is Christ that died, yea, after, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, our distress, our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, our peril, our sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, 
nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Stand for the reading of the gospel. Morning, all. St. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. All right. No man cometh unto the Father but by me yes but by me verses 27 peace i leave with you my peace i give unto you not as the world giveth give i unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid here ends the word of the lord thank you We sing again the hymn, My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Saviour divine, hear me while I pray. Today. 
be seated. When ends life's transient dream, when death calls sullen stream, shall all me roll. Bless Savior then in love, fear and distrust remove. Oh, bear me safe above a ransomed soul. Let us pray. God, oh God, we bless you and we give you thanks for the many promises that are ours in Christ Jesus. We also give you thanks that you're a God who keeps your promises and they are faithful every day, new every morning. How great is your faithfulness unto us. For the ways in which you have been faithful to Dorothy, we bless you and give you thanks for receiving her as your daughter and granting her the crown of righteousness as promised in your word to those who have run the race and have kept the faith. We bless you and give you thanks. And now, oh God, as we meet in this place to give thanks for her life, it is also a time for us to reflect on our own journey and to assess how well we are doing in walking the path to which you have called us and in running the race to which we have been called. Speak now, O God, through your word and bless its interpretation that your word will come alive and will immensely minister to us at our points of need. So let the words of my mouth and the reflections of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. My friends, brothers and sisters, I draw your attention to the scripture that has been read for us from the book of the Psalms. Psalm 23, the well-known, well-loved Psalm of David. A Psalm for every occasion, a Psalm for every season. A Psalm that speaks to us in every situation in our lives. A Psalm that gives us the grace to rejoice in the Lord, also a psalm that comforts us in times of distress, adversity, and pain. It's a psalm that we can hold to because it speaks to the journey of life, the journey that God accompanies us on every day, every moment, and every season of our lives. And so the psalmist, who is David, as he reflects on his own journey, as he thought about the things that he has been through, and how God, in God's tender mercies, accompanied him, journeyed with him, comforted him, gave him the guarantee that God was present with him and that God will never ever leave him nor forsake him, has left this beautiful psalm with us. The psalmist begins, the Lord, he says, is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside the still waters. And you see, my brothers and sisters, as we think about life, as we think about the journey of life, we recognize that life is never static. Life doesn't remain in the same position forever and ever. We are actually going somewhere Life is taking us somewhere. There is a destination. And along this path are varied experiences and situations. The seasons are constantly changing. But there are two things that do not change on this journey. 
One is the fact that God never changed. God is always with us. And the other thing that doesn't change are the, is the promises of God that remains steadfast forever. And so while many things are changing, even we ourselves experience change. These two realities remain changeless, the presence of God and the promises of God. But life is going somewhere. Life is taking us on this journey that eventually ends somewhere. There is a destination. And so as we reflect on this psalm, there are some truths that I want to share with us today as we give thanks to God for the life of our dear sister. And this psalm is also a reflection of her own journey with God over the years of her life. A psalm that no doubt resonated with her as being true to her own experience. First of all, the psalmist tells us here, when the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd, the psalmist is acknowledging that this journey called life, this path, is not one that we can travel alone. There is no space, there is no room for loners on this journey that there comes a time, there comes a time when we're going to need someone to show us the way, where we're going to need someone to help us along the way, where we're going to need companionship on this journey, but more than companionship, where we're going to need someone who is going to be our guide. And here the psalmist declares that the Lord is my shepherd. Notice that the psalmist doesn't simply acknowledges God as a shepherd, but rather very personal. The psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. And that makes all the difference in the world. It is one thing to acknowledge that there is a God. It's a totally different thing to acknowledge that this God who exists is my God, is the God in whom I trust, is the God who leads my life, is the God that I know in a very personal way, a God that I communicate with, a God who understands the very depths of my being, the psalmist says, the Lord, he is my shepherd. And this speaks to a personal relationship with God. And even as we give thanks for Dorothy's life, one of the things that we cannot contradict ourselves by saying is that Dorothy knew the Lord of God in a very personal and life-changing way. It is God who guided her over the years of her life. It was God who accompanied her on this journey of life. It was God who was her all in all. And so I'm saying to us, therefore, that as we too journey through this life, understand, my brothers and sisters, that you cannot journey alone. That you cannot make it on your own. And therefore, all of us need God. We may not always acknowledge our need for God, but our souls continue to cry out for God. For our souls cannot find rest or peace until it's it finds its rest and its peace in God. The psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. A personal, personal relationship 
with God. That made all the difference for the psalmist. Because you see, life, the psalmist knew that life was not always easy. The psalmist knew that life had its ups and downs for him. The psalmist knew that this path that he was on sometimes takes some very sudden turns and twists. The, the psalmist understood that this journey called life brings with it some pain and some challenges and some difficulties. And so he declares, the Lord is my shepherd. And so my brothers and sisters, I say to us that we too need this companionship in God along the journey of life. But the psalmist doesn't stop there. He went on and he declares, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Here the psalmist speaks about the presence of God, the personal presence of God. And so you see, for the psalmist, God was not distant. Very often we think of God as being distant, far away. The psalmist is declaring that God is my personal companion. And so God is present. And I hear Jesus saying to the disciples in the gospel that was read for us, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. He says, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. This speaks about God's personal presence with us. That he's a God who comes down and a God who meets us at our points of need. Our God is not a God who stands afar off and say, come up here and meet me, but a God who comes down. A God who meets us where life hurts. A God who meets us where the pieces are broken. A God who meets us where we do not know where to go or where to turn. A God who meets us where we are confused. A God who meets us where we are despondent. A God who meets us where we do not feel the, 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 the sense of joy to go on. He meets us in the nook and crannies of life. He meets us in our pain and our bewilderment. He meets us in those places of life. So often we think of the Christian life as utopia, that all is well, that it is all joy and peace. And we're always flying on the clouds. But if the truth be told that there are moments of confusion and, and pain and hurts, the times when we are not sure about the next moment, but, but what makes the difference is the presence of God who holds us, who, who embraces us, who assures us that all shall be well. This God who comes and meets us in those places where we are weak and broken. That's what makes the difference. This God who doesn't stay far off, but this God who comes near. This God that Dorothy served and loved who came near to her. We had a service here in this church every once a month for older persons who are unable to come to worship as often and Dorothy would be there every first Tuesday at 10 a.m. sitting right there singing the hymns of the faith rejoicing in the Lord and for her God was real for her God was not distant but present 
And my brothers and sisters, I'm saying that you and I can also experience this God who meets us at our points of need. This God who is not distant and far away, but this God who has come to us in Jesus and meets us at our points of need. That's the God that I know. That's the God that Dorothy served. That's the God who waits before you now with compassion and mercy and love and grace. He is a very present help, the psalmist says, in times of trouble. That's the God we know. The other thing that the psalmist tells us about this God is that God is the one who provides for him. He says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. It speaks about a God who provides here again. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This God is a God who provides. Jesus says, according to his riches in glory. And therefore, all of that we have, we acknowledge have come from God. He causes the earth to produce. He's the one who avails the opportunities. There is nothing that we have in this world that we can boast and claim that we have done it for ourselves. It is God and God alone. And so the psalmist is acknowledging that all that he has, all that he will ever need, come from the hand of this God. Again, I want to assure you that God is still the one who provides all that we will ever need, all that we will ever have, because if God chooses ever to withhold anything from us, there is no way that we can get what has been withheld. It is God who determines the seasons of the year. It is God who determines the brightness of the sun and the rain it is God who determines night and day. Therefore, it is God who provides our needs according to his love and his grace. But the psalmist doesn't stop there. The psalmist goes on and he talks about, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And the psalmist is therefore saying that it is God who gives perspective to my life. It is God who gives perspective. Remember I say that life is a journey. And as we go on this journey called life, sometimes the wind can blow in any direction. And if God doesn't lead us, then we will simply go where we are being blown. But you see, God gives us purpose. And therefore, that purpose gives perspective to our lives. And so we know where we are going. And we choose out the path that takes us there. And even though that path sometimes is rough, and difficult and we are being pulled to and fro. It is God who helps us to stay focused. Without God, our lives will be empty, lacking in purpose and direction. 
And so God has given to each of us responsibility. God has given to each of us the sense of purpose, something that drives us, something that propels us, something that keeps us from giving up. And so it was St. Paul who declares, I have kept the faith. I have run the race. I have finished what was given to me. I didn't just start it, I finished it. And my brothers and sisters, the greatest sense of joy is to finish something that makes a difference to the lives of others and to the world in which we live. The greatest disappointment is to come to the end of your life and discover that you didn't make much of your life, that you didn't do much, that your life didn't make a difference, that your life didn't touch the lives of others. The greatest disappointment and the greatest sense of sadness is to come to the end of your life and discover that you do not leave behind a legacy that there are not lives that have been touched and awakened and lives that are better because you've lived. But the greatest sense of joy is to come to the end of your life and realize that you have done all that you could. And that is why the Lord will say to such person, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter now into the joy of your rest and I believe that even as we gather here that the Lord will say to Dorothy well done thou good and faithful servant enter now into the joy of your rest my brothers and sisters the Lord is still the good shepherd who leads and guides and directs our lives and I encourage you as Dorothy did to put your life in the hand of this God who's more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think or even imagine so that when your life on earth comes to an end Jesus will receive you into his kingdom and you will hear him say well done Dorothy well done you have done all that you could. You have done well. Now enter into your rest. What about us? Our journey continues. We must live faithfully. We must take this life seriously. We must journey deliberately, knowing that God has entrusted this life to us is the only one we have. If we mess up this one, there is no other to correct it. This one life, we must give it our best so that we leave behind a trail that continues to bless the lives of others. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so I take this opportunity to extend to Dorothy's family, to her nephews and nieces, the deepest sympathies and prayerful support of this church community here at James Street, a church that Dorothy was a part of loved and shared herself with the people of God. It is my prayer that this same God, whom she knew and loved and worshipped, will also accompany you on this life so that when you and I come to the end of this life, that we will know that there is rejoicing in heaven in welcoming us to our new home and our new life in God, in Christ Jesus.
please know that as a church we stand ready to journey with you. And may God, who is our God, never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Let us just spend a moment in quiet reflection and prayer. God, oh God, we bless you and we give you thanks for this moment, for your word, and for the proclamation of your word. We ask, O Lord, our God, that you will use your word in a special way to bless our hearts and to bring us closer to your love and to your grace. Continue to minister to us at our points of need and bring us to the place of total commitment to Jesus. And so, Lord God, we are no longer our own. We belong to you. Take us as only you alone can and transform us. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand with me as you are able, as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We are on page 8 of our order of service. Together, I believe in God the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. A hymn I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Yeah. 
Please be seated. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God, our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of her whom we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and the blessings her life has brought to others, for her service to her generation according to your will, and for every happy remembrance of her life that now the trials of this world are over and death itself is past. Receive her into your perfect kingdom. Bring us with all who have lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. I invite you to stand again with me for the commendation as we commend our sister Dorothy to the Lord. Please stand. Eternal God, who have made us all and hate nothing that you have made, and have given your Son for our redemption, we commend our sister Dorothy Ion to your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto her and let perpetual light shine upon her. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused this pain, for me who him to death pursue. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me?
receive the benediction. Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, with the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as the body of Sister Dorothy leaves the sanctuary. pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him, for he knows our frame. Is our grass, the flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children. For the wind passes over it and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. For the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. From those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children.
that way in the secret place of the most high. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'll see of the Lord in my every day on my foot. My God, you will cover us with your face. And under your wings you will hide. Your truth shall be all.
this morning. We know that uh, neither death, nor life, nor thing, presence, nor things to come, no height, no depth, no any other creatures can separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. We know that if this early house, earthly house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God a house not made with, with hands, an internal in the, in the heaven. Since our brother Dory Miles has departed out of this life, an almighty God in his mercy has taken him to himself, with therefore we commit a body to the ground, the dust to dust asses to asses ensure and set an hope of the res uh, resurrection of eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ Amen I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me from henceforth be blessed are the dead who die in the Lord if we have the prayer book, let us join in saying together, Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, who hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us. In the house of his servant David, and he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet, we have been seen the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised for our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which I swear to our forefathers Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hands of the enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And the child shall be called the prophet of highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare this way, to give knowledge and salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, where the day spring for how high hath visited us, to give light to them that is sit in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to God. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, From henceforth blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, say the Spirit for the rest for their labors. Let us pray. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, raise up, we pray, from death of sin to the new life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant to the brave consolation and faith in this time of distress and trial, the blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom, the sustaining grace in the fellowship of your people, and stand fast in the service of your name, and the doing of your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of the troubled life until the shadow length and the evening comes. The busy world is harsh, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then the Lord in your mercy 
grant unto us safe lodging, holy rest and peace, in the last through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of God, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen and amen. <clears throat>
let us pray almighty god we give thanks to you we praise you we commit our life into your hand before we leave this place we need your blessing and we need your guidance we pray and commit our life into your hand may the grace of god the father the son and the holy spirit lead us today and forevermore amen and amen Shines bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. And when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be! And when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. When 